Konnichiwa, my gamers. Jeremiah, the anime boy here, and welcome back to Genshi Impact. Today, guys, we're gonna finish up doing the part two mission with Shan Ling, and we're gonna find Kanching too. So, okay, start up. Look for Kanching. After some testing, Shang Li monsters the dish she is making for the contest based on everyone's suggestions. The current is about to arrive in the most revealing iteration of the Moon Chase Festival's Monsterful Chef competition. And, and as ancient tale leads to the contest is also beginning to surface. She was just standing out here in the in the I forgot what I was saying. There you are. Oh you found me. The way you looked at us last episode. Something is weighing on Kanching's mind. What's wrong? Traveler, I have found myself in something of a predicament. In the competition, I voted for Smiley Yenchao. So you're frustrated because you can't go back and vote for Xiangling instead? No, that's not it. As a judge, I had a duty to remain objective. I made my decision after thinking about it very carefully. My conscience is clear. Xiangling is my friend. So by rights, I should be honest with her about this. But, as you know, I voted based purely on my personal opinion. As a contestant, Zhongling may not be able to appreciate this. And I do not know how to deal with people of her temperament. <sighs> I just don't know how to break it to her. Ah, uh, it's no big deal. Just say it however it comes naturally. Zhongling of all people isn't bothered about that kind of stuff. Anyway, she still won in the end! She's behind us! Oh hey, here you are! I've been looking for you for ages! Shangling, there's something I need to tell you. Hmm? Wh what is it? My grandfather always said to me, In contests of food, always follow your heart. Which is to say that in gastronomical disputes, or indeed competitions, one must cast their vote so the vote will like suck agree my with. This decision must be based on one's honest thoughts, not influenced by any external factors. Of course, that was just my grandfather's opinion. But I have to say, I am inclined to think he had a point. So, despite the fact that I am your friend, I cast my vote for Smiley Yen Xiao's Adeptus Temptation. I think you mean the golden shrimp balls. <laughs> Uh, yeah? Oh. Well, maybe it was. I like golden shrimp balls. Is that a problem? Shutting it up. You were acting so serious that I honestly thought something was up. It's fine. Doesn't bother me one bit. I want to know this speech. Huh? You voted for who you wanted to. And that's totally okay. In fact, that's exactly how it should be. Otherwise, how could it be a fair competition? So... You made a point of telling me. Is that because you were worried that it made you a bad friend? <clears throat> I... Don't be absurd. <sighs> Didn't I say already? I love this about you. You're just so conscientious about everything. Half-baked feedback just isn't meaningful to me at this stage. Seeking reassurance is what novices do. And it's been a long time since I was a novice. The way forward from today will only get more challenging, as will the dishes I'll need to cook. Honestly, I'll need friends like you along the way. You have a strong sense of responsibility, Kuching. But you know, not everything is always about responsibility. Yes, you're a Qixing, but you're also you, Kuching. When you're with friends, you don't need to think about everything so thoroughly. You know that's what Ningguang's like, right? Mango's always telling me about how well she gets along with Ningguang. They even play chess aboard her ship sometimes. And so you see, Ningguang's kind of bold in that she doesn't let her identity and reputation get in the way of her ability to have a good time. You can take a leaf out of her book. Outside of work, it's time to let go and relax. You don't need to be so strict with yourself. Traveler, I'm Shongling, right? Uh, anyway, what are we standing around here for? Let's go and check on the status of the Stove God statue. Oh yeah! I had nearly forgotten about that! Let's go see! I did too. Do I see my cracks on that? How strange. It hasn't changed one bit! Y uh, look in the size, Tell Paimon. Well, this doesn't make any sense. We cooked our hearts out. Does this mean 
The competition wasn't enough to awaken the statue? Oh well. I suppose it was simply not meant to be. There's still time, don't lose hope. Yeah! We've waited this long already! There's no harm in waiting a little longer! Right, Xiangling? Yup, there's still time! Let's be patient! We'll all see this through together! On another note, I have some good news for you, Kuching! Things are looking optimistic for that recipe you gave me! Master came by before the competition and filled in the parts that were missing! So now, I'll be able to cook it! In fact, I'll go find somewhere to make it right now! Wait here! Sean Link. Oh! Uh, and Traveler, could you come with me? Huh? You only just beat Smiley and Chow! You think you're up for challenging us already? Alright, time for me to get real. What are we making? I'm something of a kitchen god myself. Obviously not what I meant. You collect recipes, don't you? I thought you'd probably be needing this dish during your travels, so I figured I'd share it with you. Oh! <laughs> right! Time on you, Dad! Oh, boss! Uh, Jeez! Sheesh, we totally misread that situation. Who am I kidding? Shang Li's the real kitchen queen. Uh huh? Jeez! Careful eating your words so fast, you'll give yourself heartburn. Uh, what are you staring at me for? Go on, cook it on with your cooking. You were laughing! Suck to over cool before we leave. <sighs> what? Will we ever manage to reawaken the statue? Oh, I think there was one way. <laughs> I just cook the chill mine on the buns. What was it? Oh, these ones? It looks delicious. Look at all the paws. Okay, that one to make. And you're still here 24 7 making food. I mean, she's been staying at the egg thing. We made five. The traveler and I made one each. Here, have a taste while it's still warm. Thank you. Don't mind if I do. You don't need anything. Can't she taste everyone's dishes? Mm -hmm. What is it? What does that face mean? <laughs> that tastes like poison! Uh, Kaching? Uh, apologies. Shangling, Traveler, thank you both. This is everything I had hoped it would be. It tastes wonderful and Gigi, quite amazing. I'm burning, bitch. Somehow it took me right back to my childhood when my grandfather was still around. Aww. Really? That's awesome! I didn't have a chance to fully explain before. In fact, when Master had filled in the missing parts of the recipe for me, I realized that I already knew how to make this dish. You already Whoa. know. You mean okay, then. you were able to make this without ever seeing the recipe? Uh-huh. My dad taught me how to make it. What? Wait, but isn't this dish from Kuching's grandpa's notes, though? About that. I do not believe that this recipe was my grandfather's creation. My grandfather was a well-known real estate tycoon in Liyue, and also a scholar. He was an avid collector of old books and was quite knowledgeable on many of Liwa's customs and traditions that are no longer practiced. As a child, I used to spend a lot of time with him in his study. Please! You bitch. We'd read the classics together, then debate how much of it was actually genuine, and whether Rex Lapis was real or not. But he is real. He used to say, books are just a bridge that brings Pussy. us a little closer to history. It's up to those of us in later generations to ask these questions, search for the answers, and decide what they mean. Since then, my grandfather has passed on, and I've grown up to become a Chi-Sing. My views on Rex Lapis have changed in this time too, from myth to reality. For me, the name Rex Lapis is inextricably wound up with memories of my grandfather. Whenever I see his name written down, it always reminds me of sitting in my grandfather's study, seeing all of his notes. As I said earlier, this recipe came from those same notes. It's an ancient dish that he was trying to this restore to its original like form. But, unfortunately, without the full recipe, he never quite succeeded. Still, each time he tried cooking it, he'd always get me to have a taste while it was still warm. <sighs> the memories. 
This really is the taste of my childhood. Ancient dish? Are cornbread buns really that old? Well, at least in my family it is. My dad learned how to make it from his dad, and supposedly it's been passed down that way for generations. We call them chili minced cornbread buns. They're a traditional folk food snack, easy to pack up and take with you on the road. So they're the perfect thing to eat on the go. Yeah, Goomba. <laughs> Seeing Boba just reminded me of something. I actually made this dish on the day I first met Boba. How did you first meet? It was in a cave in the mountains. I ducked inside to get out of the rain and saw an offering table in there. So I put the cornbread buns I brought with me on it. Oh, I saw, I saw that. Um, that's that. Yeah, I saw on the tra on that trailer she was in. And then Goomba showed up uh, out of nowhere. Then I ended up falling asleep, and when I woke up, I found that that Goomba had eaten every last one. Goomba followed me around ever since. We're practically family now. Yeah, like a baby, you eh? Oh, no. Stop the conversation. Look, the, the stone. What? Huh? It's a Goomba statue. It burst open. It's it's my dad. No, <laughs> is that Goomba? Goomba? What are you? What? Huh? Is it, oh my God! That is me. Ah, oh, I see the chili mince cornbread buns have been served. Master, Granny, look! GG. Indeed it does. After all, Guoba is the deity you've been searching for. God of the stove. Oh yeah, I forgot about how Guoba is. Guoba is a god of shift too, right? Fuck you, ESK bitch. Guoba is a god? Oh, I said that. Uh, no. He's like, oh yes, I am a god with no eyes. You asked me if a sufficiently festive Please, atmosphere would be enough to reawaken the stove god. And my answer is this. Yes, and no. Mm. The Stove God has always been a deity with great affection for the people, and who acts in response to their desires. Yo. To him, oh. the heart's passions and the heart's desires are not the same thing. Passion can be a technique, a skill, something derived from experience. But desires, they are deeper, more innate. They are the heart strength in its purest form. Masterful chefs is wonderfully exciting, but it is more an exercise of passion than of desire. And passion alone will not suffice to reawaken the stove god from his deep slumber. But just now, when Kuching ate this dish he had longed for, a deeply held desire was fulfilled. As well as receiving an answer to a question, she also gained something much more precious. A moment of poignant nostalgia so vivid, it felt like she was right there alongside her grandfather. The enormous power unleashed by the fulfillment of this desire resonated with the stove god's statue and caused it to manifest once more the form it took in the past. Of course, the stove god himself is not contained within the statue. <laughs> the true stove god has been here with us all along. Yeah, Goba. Uh, Goba. How does it feel seeing a statue of yourself from your glory days? Uh, look at him. Still so majestic. Glory days? Wait, what happened? Did Goba used to be different from now? Oh, yes. Back in his day, your Guoba was once the patron god of the soil. But all the wisdom and power he had then, he has since surrendered to the soil itself. A god surrendering their power to the soil. Did he have to play again? I have heard this turn of phrase before, but what does it mean? The kinds of trials and tribulations that a land can face are far more than you could imagine. Droughts, floods, torrential rain, hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, fires, and plagues. The threat of disaster will never fully disappear from Liyue. Even woes that have never been faced before in history will come to pass in the future. 
Such things affect you mortals far more than we adept die with our immortal forms. Like he once walked with you over the barren plains until you arrived at last at the harbor. He joined you in building your dwellings and lighting the stoves. It was his hand that lit the very first street lamp of Leoe and brought the aroma of cooked food into every household in the land. No, I hope I'm not now, buddy. You mortals no longer remember you, him, but back in the age when you did, he was the closest of all the adepti to the common folk. Well, what's going on? Told me that dining is the profoundest of customs in the human world. To eat well is to consume vitality itself. And to drink well is to partake of the very essence of the world. Apologies we couldn't see the cussing guys, I'd skip it. It is a matter of paramount importance, you said. For people cannot face the arduous journey ahead on an empty stomach. At once a humble affair and a profound one. A humble meal of maize and spring water is also profound in that. By ensuring one's survival, it paves the way for millennia of human history and culture to come. My dear friend, Liu has changed so much while you have slept. Looking at the prosperity and beauty around us today, does it make you happy? Boba, this is kind of a huge deal. Why didn't you say anything? Be sad and youngling. There are two sides to everything. Kuba may have lost many of his former faculties, but he is now as carefree as can be, without a single worry in the whole world. In this world we inhabit, who can truly be said to live a life free of all woes? Those with a mind and with the knowledge will certainly be troubled by all manner of things. But he has gone further than us in his journey. He had both wisdom and courage. Everything he took upon himself, he was also ready to part with. His carefree demeanor today is a testament to the fact that he is at rest. So since you are his friend, take good care of him. Go out to walk and play. Allow him to eat, drink, and be merry. I will! You can count on me! Xiangling, you have an adeptal affinity. Guoba follows you around because he has respect for you. The moment he awoke, he was met with the familiar flavor in the chili mince cornbread buns he ate. After all that time, he still recognized the dish he had invented. And he approved of you as the one who had cooked it. That's right. The taste of one's home cuisine always brings back memories of home. Though he remembered nothing, eating the food you had cooked gave him a feeling of familiarity. That is why he stuck by you. You may be the first person in history to give the stove god the experience of being a satisfied customer. That makes you quite a remarkable chef. I love Shanley's cooking too. If that's true, I couldn't be happier. Because... Putting a smile on customers' faces is what we chefs are called to do! Well then, it's getting late and I still have things to do. Time for me to say goodbye. Traveler, Paimon, Xiangling, thank you all very much. I look forward to spending more time together in the future. Sounds good, we'll be waiting. Oh man, I guess so bye. My dad's probably heard the good news already, but I should still go catch up with him. Master, it's been a while since you came by. Why don't you join me? He thinks about you all the time, you know. He's always telling me to invite you over. Oh, goodness me. Then, far be it from me to refuse. Off we go, then. Let's saunter over gently and 
See how all the city folk are getting along. Oh, what are we doing here now? Hi, Dad! I'm back! Hey, hey! What are you doing there? I should be the one handling that! Goomba? Oh no! Goomba's taking off! Uh, I think he's fine. Look who it is. Oh my god, it's Zhang Li! I haven't seen you all day! Oh, it's you. My my son. <laughs> he said, hello, my son! Papa! You're not Marakuma. Hello there, old friend. Aww, oh, look. Bless my soul. Are you out for a stroll as well? Given the season, it felt fitting to take a leisurely walk while the meal is being prepared. Quite right. And it also gave us the chance to run into you. Guoba may not recognize you, but as ever, he seems quite delighted to see you. So, Guoba doesn't remember anything, but can still feel when something's familiar? Friendship will always withstand the ravages of time. Traveler, what do you think of the name of this festival? Moon Chase. Infinitive and seasonal. The moon is a carrier of countless emotions. So many things only seem to surface as we gaze up beneath its poignant glow. Wherever the moonlight shines, the heart is wont to follow. Fond memories of those no longer with us. Debts of gratitude to old friends. The meaning of ages past and gone. All wrapped up in the city that has existed for so many moons to date. All these things and more, they are why people chase the moon. <laughs> in old age, the sight of many things puts one in a wistful mood. But children are always a beautiful sight to see. Such exuberant life force. It, it seems to well up from deep within the land itself. A land that has been in existence for so many millennia, and yet one that still dazzles today. Perhaps, Traveler, oh, I don't wait. This Moon Chase Festival has been all the more entertaining with you here to witness it. Now, let's have Xiang Ling brew us a nice pot of tea. We shall drink and chat at our leisure. This is the end, isn't it? Oh, what an ending to see Zhang Ling all of a sudden. That is nice. Oh, wait. Oh, let's, let's talk to them real quick before we end the episode. So, let's talk to Zhang Ling first. Mm. The food at Wan Min restaurant is excellent. I eat here often. Ah, oh, you can say that again. Xiang Ling is a remarkable child. Surely the culinary talent of the century. <laughs> Indeed. To have mastered the craft at her age lends credence to the old aphorism that heroes are made young. Okay, Goba. Mm. Oh, never mind. Food She's still inside. I want to talk to her before we go. Oh my god. Hmm. Everyone's here to eat. What should I cook? Let me think. I've got some fowl and some fish and shrimp meat. So I can do two snack dishes. Yes, and a few stir fries. <laughs> Everyone's gonna love it. Yeah. Give me huggies too. Okay, here guys, the next episode will be in the next update, which I know this is going to be a new mission for us too. So I'm going to heal. I want to do more of this, if I could actually. Sayonara.